we want to balance the given chemical reaction. The mass balance theory states that we cannot create or remove atoms within a chemical reaction, which means in this case we must have the same number of oxygen, tin, and hydrogen atoms on both sides of the reaction. Notice right now we don't. For example, we have two atoms of oxygen on the left and only one on the right. Because the reaction has four elements or compounds, we introduce four variables. I will use x sub one through x sub four, which become the coefficients in the chemical reaction. And now we write a system of equations for each of the three atoms. On the left, because we have one atom of tin, on the right we also have one atom of tin, the coefficients must be equal, meaning x sub one must equal x sub three. And then moving on to oxygen, notice how on the left we have two atoms of oxygen, on the right we only have one, and therefore two times x sub one must equal one times x sub four, or two x sub one must equal x sub four. And then moving on to hydrogen, notice how we have two atoms of hydrogen on the left, and two atoms of hydrogen on the right, and therefore two times x sub two must equal two times x sub four, or two x sub two must equal two x sub four. From here, let's write these equations as homogeneous equations by setting the right side equal to zero. For the first equation, we subtract x sub three on both sides, which gives us x sub one minus x sub three equals zero. For the second equation, we subtract x sub four on both sides, which gives us two x sub one minus x sub four equals zero. For the last equation, we subtract two x sub four on both sides, which gives us two x sub two minus two x sub four equals zero. From here, from here we'll set up an augmented matrix and then write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Because we have four variables in three equations, we will have a three by five augmented matrix, where the first column will be the coefficients of x sub one, the second column will be the coefficients of x sub two, the third column will be the coefficients of x sub three, the fourth column will be the coefficients of x sub four, and the fifth column will be the constants, which in this case will all be zero. So each equation will give us one row in the augmented matrix. Looking at the first equation, the first row in the matrix will be one, zero, negative one, zero, zero, because the coefficient of x sub one is one, the coefficient of x sub three is negative one, and the constant on the right is zero. The second row is going to be two, zero, zero, negative one, zero. The third row is going to be zero, two, zero, negative two, zero. Now we want to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which we will do using technology. We will use the Desmos matrix calculator. Then click RREF, select matrix A and enter. Let's click the convert to fraction button on the far right. And now we have the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Let's copy this over to our work. Because we have the matrix in reduced row echelon form, remember the first non-zero entry in each row is a pivot. So we have a pivot here, here, and here, which means the basic variables or leading variables are x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three, and the variable x sub four is a free variable. So the next step, let's write the corresponding equations for each row. From the first row, we have the equation x sub one minus one half x sub four equals zero. The second row gives us the equation x sub two minus x sub four equals zero. The third row gives us the equation x sub three minus one half x sub four equals zero. Because x sub four is the free variable, we will now express x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three in terms of x sub four. In the first equation, we add one half x sub four to both sides, which gives us x sub one equals one half x sub four. 
In the second equation, we add x sub four to both sides, which gives us x sub two equals x sub four. In the third equation, we add one half x sub four to both sides, which gives us x sub three equals one half x sub four. X sub four is free, and therefore x sub four can be any value. Let's say x sub four equals x sub four. So these four equations must be true in order for the chemical reaction to be balanced. But because we have the free variable x sub four, we often parameterize these equations in terms of, let's say, t, by letting the free variable x sub four equal t. So if we let x sub four equal t, we have x sub four equals t as the fourth equation. The first equation is x sub one equals one half t. The second equation is x sub two equals t. The third equation is x sub three equals one half t. So it's common to express the solution in this form here using the free variable x sub four as well as parameterizing, as well as parameterizing the equations in this case in terms of t. So again, all these equations must be true in order to balance the chemical reaction. And let's take a look at an example of this. Let's say, for example, we let t equal two. So if we substitute two for t in all the equations, we get x sub one equals one, x sub two equals two, x sub three equals one, and x sub four equals two. And if we sub these values back into the reaction, where we have the variables x sub one, x sub two, x sub three, and x sub four, we get this chemical reaction here, which is now balanced. And let's just verify we have the same number of atoms of tin, oxygen, and hydrogen on both sides of the reaction. On the left, we have one atom of tin. On the right, we also have one. Looking at oxygen, we have two atoms of oxygen on the left, and we also have two on the right. Notice how we have a coefficient of two times one atom of oxygen. So two is equal to two, that's true. And then for the hydrogen, we have four atoms of hydrogen on the left, on the right, we also have four atoms of hydrogen. So notice how the chemical reaction, so notice how the chemical reaction is balanced. I hope you found this helpful.